Hey there, Frugal Brewers. Today we are going to be bottling my traditional mead. And we're going to be using swing top bottles and better yet, recycled swing top bottles. This is the traditional mead I started probably about six months ago. Uh, as you can see, it's cleared out pretty well. Looks like we got some uh, yeast cake at the bottom there. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be transferring it um, and clearing out any of that yeast so it doesn't get in the bottles. And then once it's in this uh, container over here, then we can go ahead and add it into the swing top bottles. Now, the reason that I'm using swing top bottles is for a couple of reasons. Um, one is they're very cheap because you can reuse them. The only thing that you really have to change out is this uh, red top right here. And this red top um, really is pretty cheap. It's comparable to a uh, bottle cap. Um, but another reason that we wanted to use these swing top bottles is because uh, if, they're, if this isn't fully fermented and it does carbonate a little bit, then these bottles aren't going to explode because then the tops will just pop off um, from the excess pressure. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I think swing top bottles are pretty good for this, especially if it's your first time bottling a mead and you're worried about any explosions. But I'm pretty sure that this mead won't have any of those issues because one of the days uh, that it was fermenting in my closet it got really, really hot. And pretty much the day after, this cleared out completely. Um, and then everything just seemed to drop to the bottom. So it's looking pretty clear. I think we're gonna have a pretty good mead on our hands. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is I want to check the gravity to see how dry this meat is gonna be. Um, and for that, I have a spectrometer. And the reason I wanted to use this is because I only have a gallon here and I don't want to waste a single drop of this delicious meat that took me so long to make. So we're gonna go ahead and use this in order to get a gravity reading. So after checking my uh, ending gravity with, uh, with the spectrometer here, I ended up, up, up with a 1.035. Um, now from a starting gravity of 1.105, that means that I have about a 9.2% ABV mead here. Um, I did have a little bit of a taste with the, um, the little, uh, this right here, and uh, it's still, it tasted uh, pretty uh, high in that alcohol percentage. It doesn't, it doesn't seem that mellow. So um, maybe we'll age it in the bottle a little, little bit more to uh, get that flavor uh, just a little bit better over the next uh, uh, month or so. Uh, maybe I'll drink one and, uh, and, and keep uh, another one uh, aging for longer. But we're gonna go ahead and move what we have in here and it looks like we got some of that that dropped out of there. And of course, a uh, nice little bug in there. So that's one thing that you'll want to keep these there for so that you don't get uh, any bugs inside of here. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to use this oversized, uh, this is for five gallons normally. We're going to use this to transfer into here. And we're going to filter through this bag to make sure that we don't get any yeast. So during this process, what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that this uh, end that it's going into is as close to the bottom of the container as possible. That way you're not introducing any oxygen. If you are having this at the top and it has to make its way down into the vessel that you're putting it into, then you're going to be introducing oxygen and you're gonna oxygenate your meat. And so when you're aging it, it's not gonna be very good. When you are ready to bottle, you'll need to make sure that you add on the extension, which is the bottling wand. 
Um, and this will make it so that you can actually stop the flow and switch to your next bottle. It'll also make it so that you're getting to the very bottom and introducing as little um, oxygen to the bottle as possible. Um, so what we will want to do is we will want to put that in there and then go from here. So here we have a nice full bottle. So when I am filling up the with the bottling wand, you'll, it'll fill up to about here, to about this area right here. But then when you take the wand out, it'll come down a little bit more. And it's good to have just a little bit of head there. And now we can put this on here and then close it like so. And there we go. We have our very own mead. So I had a little bit of a mishap when I was transferring to uh, this growler here with the auto siphon I was using. Just make sure that you're not using an oversized auto siphon because that can be a lot heavier and I, and I got a tilt going and kind of spilled some mead um, over all over the uh, counter here. So that sucked a little bit. So I didn't get my full growler here. Um, and there isn't a whole lot of room or there's, a, there's quite a bit of space from here to the top. So there's some oxygen in here and I don't have any way of pushing the oxygen out. So this will be the one that I'm drinking from and these two I'll be aging in. One of the disadvantages of aging inside these bottles is that they're clear. And since they're clear, you have to keep them in a dark place. Otherwise, um, the UV lights can get to it and that will uh, degrade your mead over time. So making sure that you're keeping these in a dark place is very important when you're using the clear bottles like this. But if you use a dark bottle like this, you can keep it out um, longer and it won't spoil as much. Um, I also want, you also want to make sure to get as little uh, headspace here as possible so that you're not having too much oxygen contact. And what's really nice is we have the top of these bottles being really thin so the actual oxygen touching it is not very much. So that'll be good for uh, some long-term aging. Now I poured myself a little bit of glass of the mead here, so I'm going to go ahead and try it out. Uh, like I said before, it was a 9.2% mead. Starting gravity was 1.10, ending gravity was 1.035. Has a really, really nice honey character. You can taste the, or you can smell the alcohol coming from it. You really get some of the uh, some of that heat from the alcohol content in there, but it ends pleasantly with the with that honey character. Very good. I don't really sense any fruity notes, but yeah, it does it does still feel a bit hot? Maybe a little bit longer aging will help out. But uh, for a home brewed mead, pretty good, pretty tasty. I do like how it finishes a lot better than the front end. The front end needs some work on it and uh, I'll have to look up how to get the better tastes on the front end. So if you, uh, you have any ideas on how to get more flavor in the front versus the back, go ahead and comment down below. Also, uh, go ahead and visit frugalhomebrew.com for more about mead making. Uh, this is my first mead video on the channel, but it won't be my last. So make sure that you hit subscribe and like this video for more mead information and for more experiments. I've got some interesting experiments coming up in the future. So uh, go ahead and make sure that you give us a like.